All right, it is a Friday afternoon. I took off from work because I have a very bad sore throat. It's raining outside and it's the beginning of February, cla just classic weather. But you know what? You know, we're gonna push through all these problems. So you wanna commit a genocide? Congratulations, you've come to the right place. I don't mean a genocide in real life, that'll get me banned, I mean, what if you want to do something really fucked up in D&D? Whether this is you, as a player, you're probably evil. Wow, I can't believe you're at this video. Or if you're a DM and you want just a villain who does not give zero, just gives zero shits about anybody, literally anybody, including themselves, then this is how you would do it. You see, everyone's been using the gate spell wrong. They think, Oh, gate spell, that's just the worst plane shift. Well, you're wrong, they're wrong, and I'm right, and I'm gonna show you why. With science. First, let me explain what I mean by committed genocide. No, I don't mean targeting a specific race or, you know, doing any like kind of fucked up bullshit like that. No, I, I guess genocide is probably the wrong word. Massacre is probably a better word for what, what you're about, to, what you would do if you did this method. Um, but either way, a lot of people are gonna die if you do this. So be aware, DMs take notes. So the gate spell, you can open up a portal up to 20 feet in diameter to another plane of existence and things can go through your side of the portal into their side of the portal. Well guess what? Things can come back through that portal too. And so there's a lot of uses for the gate spell. You gotta be pretty creative. Um, but one that I haven't really heard of um, that is a very viable option for the gate spell um, is opening a gate to the plane of water. Um, I think you can see where I'm going with this, but that is a very bad idea, especially if you don't know where in the plane of water you're opening up your portal, but especially if you open a portal extremely deep inside of the plane of water. And especially if you're not underwater when it happens. So say you're standing on dry land and you open up a portal to the plane of water that's super deep inside of the plane of water, and what's gonna happen is you're gonna get a ton of water to shoot out of the portal at you. And the question is, how hard would that water come out of that portal? How much of it would? And how many people would die? I can't really answer that last one because that one's very circumstantial, but I can definitely answer the first two. And that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna talk about the effects of opening a portal to the plane of water and seeing how much damage can you do with it. So let's keep, let's keep going. So first up, we're gonna do the science style, which means because we're doing a bunch of physics, we gotta make some assumptions about the water, the plane of water, because this is what's gonna be happening, and the fantasy earth that you're playing on. So like first things first, like all good physics students, we're gonna assume air resistance drag does not exist. What would we do? Actually think that like your gravity is different because you're on a fantasy earth? No, wrong. Resistance does not exist. Thank you. Anyway, now we establish that, we're also gonna establish gravity. We're gonna assume gravity is the same as current earth because like, I don't know the fantasy earth you're playing on, but I know the earth that I'm standing on. It's 9.18 meters per second squared, baby. That's the, accelerate, the gravitational acceleration. All right, continuing on. To commit the genocide, we're gonna open a portal to the plane of water. And to do this, we're gonna have to open the portal deep inside the plane of water. How deep? Mariana Trench deep, baby. We're gonna go to the deepest part of the Earth's oceans, which is over seven miles. Seven miles deep. In science term, that's about 11,034 11, meters. And we have to assume one more thing. A lot of assumptions. This is science, baby. 
So we gotta figure out the density of this water. So the problem with the ocean is that um, the density of the salt water can vary based on a lot of different factors from salinity to temperature to region. It can range anywhere from 1,020 to 1,029 kilograms per meter cubed. And we're gonna assume for our calculations that we're gonna use the highest density in the range, 1,029 kilograms per meter cubed. Why? Because maximum effort, and I already did the math. Please don't make me redo it. <sighs> Continuing onward. So like any, like any good self-help book, in physics, you gotta set goals for yourself. In which case, let's remind ourselves of this goal, how to commit genocide. Let's remind ourselves of our goal, how to commit genocide. So, how to commit genocide? How much force is coming out of the, of the water from the portal? Great question. Force. F equals mass times acceleration, or F equals MA. You might have seen this if you've been to a, a physics class. It's like the classic physics equation. It's super important. But none of the terms make sense for our problem. Mass, acceleration. I don't know the fucking mass of the water. I don't know the acceleration of this water. So we gotta, we're gonna pull a pro physics maneuver, and we're gonna convert all of those variables to variables that we like. So mass can become density times volume i'll just put oh, they'll, they'll show up mass equals density times volume and acceleration becomes velocity divided by change in time so our new equation looks like a combination of these two which can be found on the screen so now that we have all of our variables we can start solving for these variables the first one that we're going to solve for is velocity and to do this we're gonna play um, the my favorite game and the favorite game of any physics student which is which obscure math equation are we gonna use to solve for our stupid variable and the answer this time is a guy called Bernoulli's equation it's kind of a complicated equation gonna be honest and I did learn how to derive it um, I'm not like I would forget how to derive this thing that we're talking about <laughs> Why would I, why would I forget? Moving along. So it's essentially a conservation of energy equation. So essentially uh, you're gonna take energy, energy on one side is gonna be equal to energy on this other side after some kind of change occurs. In this case, um, we're gonna be super generous and assume that the only energy that's being affected on the plane of water side is gonna be the actual depth of the water. So we're going to assume that the water's not moving. <laughs> Highly unlikely, you know, the fucking ocean. We're going to assume that, you know, there's no other pressures, external pressures pressing down upon it. And then we're going to, so we're, the only energy we're going to get from this is going to be the pressure from the, uh, uh, the depth of the water itself. <laughs> and on the other side, the side that you're standing on, or all of your victims are standing on, we're going to assume that you have atmospheric pressure, but you're also gonna have the kinetic energy per unit of volume of the water rushing through this portal after you open it. So that's the change. You open a portal, that's the change, guys. And so with this equation, by doing a little bit of mass, we get <coughs> velocity is equal to 464.8 meters per second. So, you know, that's a, uh, that's pretty bad. That's pretty fast. That's, um, that's pretty fast. We're gonna come back to that one in a little bit, but just for like, so you can ponder upon that, the speed of sound is about 343 meters per second. So we're gonna come back to that one. Continuing onwards, the other variables uh, we need to solve for is the volume of the water and the change in time. Change in time, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. That's gonna, we're gonna take one round of D&D, &D, which is equal to six seconds. You can look that up if you don't believe me. And then we're going to solve for the volume by doing a third classic physics maneuver, which is assuming a very obtuse shape for whatever you're using. You know, you've heard of the spherical cow, see image on screen. But now have you heard of cylinder of water? 
now you have, we're essentially, gonna, we're gonna assume that the water comes out in a perfect cylinder. Which is super unlikely, but you know, and by super unlikely, I mean pretty much impossible, but if it did, that would be pretty epic for our equation. Anyway, um, so doing a little bit of math with the volume of a cylinder, which is just the area of its circle times by its length, uh, which we calculate by figuring out how far it can travel in six seconds, then, then calculating the area based on the size of your portal, you get bada bing bada boom, 81,394.9 cubic meters. So plugging back into our original equation, we get 6,488,247,943 newtons of force. Holy cow. That's a lot. Remember that number I, I said earlier? 464.8 meters per second, how that was faster than the speed of sound? Um, yeah, that's uh, about the speed the Earth rotates. understand that that is about the speed the earth rotates it the earth it follows the rotation of the earth that's how fast it's going but dividing the velocity by the change in time just like we did earlier you get 77 meters per second squared which is about three times the gravitational acceleration of jupiter and 7.8 times the gravitational acceleration of earth my bra Comparing the actual force we calculated, that's about 1.3 times the amount of force of the water against the Hoover Dam. Which, I mean, like, that one's fair, I guess. That one makes sense. Essentially, you're opening the Hoover Dam in the middle of a city. Um, a little bit stronger than the Hoover Dam. But, like, what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? What does any of this mean in d and we, We've gone through a lot of science in the past few minutes, but what does, how, how can this help you commit genocide in your D&D &D game? Or, I say help you, help your villains, because if you do this, you're definitely a villain. So, as a precursor, I'm not your DM, and to be fair, I don't know if I let this bullshit go in my game because this does seem <laughs> fucking ridiculous but i would make a villain do this this is fair i would i would i would fuck him with with a villain that does this i'm a, I'm a dm i have no shame also they're like level 15 they can do with their problems consequences of their own actions or in this case inaction of not being able to counterspell them but you know what would happen in D D? If your villain used this, if you used this, you know, it doesn't matter at this point. What would happen in D&D? So, one, a sonic boom would occur, which I would say would deafen everybody in at least a thousand feet. I'm gonna be honest, I didn't look up how far away a sonic boom deafens people, but it's pretty fucking loud, at least for like a round or two. Um, that's gonna be, it's gonna hurt a lot your ears, you know? But honestly, that's like, the least of your problems because <laughs> number two in six seconds 200 million gallons of water is going to pour out of the portal and you know at a speed at which the earth rotates and that's going to obliterate anyone seated within anywhere close to this portal you know anywhere anywhere in the anyone in the immediate vicinity is pretty much dead if your DM is nice, maybe they'll let you make a deck safe for like all of the bones in your body. And if you're a rogue, maybe you'll succeed. And number three, probably the worst one, uh, suppose that the caster somehow managed to survive this and continues to concentrate on the spell for the full minute, which means 200 million gallons of water uh, every six seconds is coming out of the portal, which uh, at a speed at which the earth rotates. Um, you now have to contend with all of that water that's now filling up a 306 foot cube on each side. Um, supposing you're some kind of aquatic race um, and you didn't die immediately, congratulations, you could probably survive. You should also be aware like just breathing isn't good enough because you probably have to survive under an immense amount of pressure of the water. So you would have to be some kind of 
underwater aquatic race. We're looking at you, Tritons. Love you. Humans would probably pass out very quickly from the pressure of the water. Otherwise, by how fast the water is moving, you probably wouldn't be able to hold your breath in time, and so would you immediately start to choke. So by the suffocation rules found on page 183 of the PHB, you can survive a number of rounds up to your constitution modifier. Um, so 6 to 30 seconds. Um, so I hope you enjoy the last moments, or the last moments of many, many, many NPCs. But if it makes you feel better, you're probably not dying alone. Even the Tarrasque wouldn't be able to survive being pummeled by all of this force or be able to hold its breath because in 30 seconds that water would not be able, the Tarrasque would not be able to move out of the water. So at least you took down a Tarrasque. Congratulations. Before I end this rant, on science and D&D, I do want to address uh, a concern that a lot of the more sciencey people might um, bring up in the comments or just to think about, which is the fact that I didn't calculate energy. Um, and, you know, it would have been easier to calculate energy, yes. And it would have been easier to compare it to actual real world things. It would have made a lot more sense to compare it to real world things with energy. And you would be correct about that. But did I want to? No, I wanted to know how hard you'd be slapped in the face by water coming out of the gate spell that is connected to the plane of water. So, no, that's not an energy question. That's a force question. Moving on. Next question.